going to stay. Yes. Here's our next batch of work. That's right, the time has come to get into the Farmall H hydraulic belly pump unit. It is a pump, it is a reservoir, it is a control, all in one. Multiple ports for takeouts, for running oh, one-way cylinders. This is not a live power pump, it's driven off of the counter shaft of the transmission, so the clutch has to be engaged for that to be spinning. But for our uses, it works just fine. I'm not going to do a complete rebuild to this because I did a complete actual rebuild to it the last time I was in it. I made a mistake though. It's been awfully greasy ever since because I did not use the proper grade of gasket material beneath the control cover, beneath the outlet bank. Uh, it was this stuff, if I remember correctly, this JV-102. And uh, I used this extensively. Oh, this was back around... Um, 2012-ish maybe, 2009 even, because it was really easy to work, it was easy to pop holes in, it was easy to cut, it was just a, a joy to make gaskets out of it. So I started making all my gaskets out of this. And then I learned that it's actually a bit porous when exposed to petroleums and oils. So it started leaking almost immediately just through this uh, this distribution block right here. I, you know, it didn't take long at all before I had hydraulic oil running down. And then after a while it started seeping between the control cover and the reservoir. And I just never bothered to take the thing back apart and get those old gaskets out of there and get some better ones put in. So that's mostly what we are going to be doing today along with cleaning the outside for paint. And we'll throw some new um, input coupling seals in there as well. So let's get started. Everything here is pretty basic. 10 bolts, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Hold the control to the reservoir. That can then be lifted off. And there is a linkage in here for the control rod that comes in from the side, but this has to be kind of manipulated out of. So it doesn't just pull straight off but you gotta get it out and away far enough to see what is happening. All right, and this yoke right here is what we just had to kick this sideways and disengage. And here's the arm up in the inside right here from the, the lever shaft that goes through the side. That's what that yoke um, anchored around. So to take that out, you can see where the slotted drive end sticks out on that side. We just need to take the arm off of the inside and it uses the same pinch bolt and flat washer as a key that the release yoke uses for the, um, the main clutch. All right, so that's a, a washer and a key at the same time. Shaft slides out the side. You can see the groove that flat washer goes into, acts as a key that just fits in the uh, the slot on the arm and we have an oil seal as well now I've gotten by with quite a lot up here because the oil level never gets up this far and I've never really had any trouble with them leaking and that's a good thing because these later housings use this smaller outside diameter seal than the earlier ones and I've never found a replacement for this um, if I had to replace one I'd either have to take the uh, the bore out larger or make a sleeve for a smaller diameter seal on the outside. It's for a three quarter shaft, but luckily these usually can be found in good shape. I just continually reuse them and it was not oily up here. Has not posed a problem. It's gonna get put right back in. All right, we've got the pump unit and the control. Now I want to take the input coupling off, drive coupling off, because I need to replace the seal that's behind it. So, the way you do that, and I've got this 
placed upside down right now because this square opening here is the suction side. That's the inlet side where the pump draws the fluid. And if you shine a flashlight down the opening, you're not gonna see it on camera, but you can see one of the pump gears spinning around in there. And this is how you remove the coupling. So the manual states to take an eighth inch thick piece of steel, three quarters of an inch wide, six inches long, and stick down that opening. And it what it does is it jams the pump gears so that they cannot turn. And I was a bit hesitant when I read that the first time through, but I'll tell you what it works. So instead of a piece of steel, I've just got this flat ended bar and we've locked the pump gear. And I think I can get by with uh, just throwing this pry bar crossways in that slot. And this is a counterclockwise removal on this coupling. So sometimes just a smack with a mallet on that bar cracks it loose. Yep. And then we just turn it off just like a regular nut. We'll take a look at uh, the seal lip surface. Looks pretty good on it. Remove the bar or the flat piece of steel that was locking the gears. Everything is still all well. All right, so because I need to get this piece off to replace the gasket beneath it, we are going to have to take a few of the pieces off up here because they cover the bolts that go in from this way that hold this piece on. So lucky us. I've pulled a cotter pin from the end of this long pin here and this somewhat shorter pin here. So we'll work on pushing both of those out. There we are. Detent lever, pay close attention to that spring. We've got the second one up here. Oop, slow down, man. There's the spring for that. Main pin out, and then that lever, because it has a yoke on each end, like a fork there, that just pulls right out. So with this bolt loose, it won't come out because it hits that valve and I don't want to take that apart. I don't need to. And the second bolt here out, there's the block that we need to reseal. And I think just for ease of cleanup, I'm going to just take the pump cartridge off of the cover because we're going to need to get that old paint off of the cover and it's going to be easiest to keep the pump housing clean, the cartridge clean, if we just get it right out of the way. Here's what remains of the pump. We've got some oil to deal with. I'll turn the camera off, take care of that, get the mess under control, bring you all back. Well, it's sometime later. The pump cartridge is cleaned sufficiently, as is the cover. We've got the new seal installed. That's uh, SKF 13649. Fits the bill nicely right there. and. Of course, with any hydraulic pump, it goes without saying you want to be especially clean with everything, but even more so with these because they do not have a filter for the fluid. So any contamination you leave behind or introduce when you're working on these is just going to circulate over and over and over again and really wear on everything. So just be very mindful of that. Place this back on the pump cartridge. And just carefully flip it over, making sure nothing falls out. And with the pump cartridge bolts tight, we can spin it around. And, well, 
I'm going to get some of that oil off my hands first. Didn't think this one through. All right, we can just edit that whole debacle out. We can throw this uh, oh, takeout manifold. Uh, I don't know exactly what to call it, but it's the other thing on the front side that we needed to reseal. And the whole reason why we had to get into the pump cartridge to begin with. And with the final two pump cartridge bolts tight, we can replace the pieces that we had to remove from the top of the assembly to gain access. So we'll fork this end into that cross shaft, and then the pin guides through. And the spring. Checking our witness marks here, make sure we put it back the way that it was. All right. And the second detent arm. And with both cotter pins reinstalled, we can do a function check. So here's how the mechanism works. When you pull on the hydraulic control lever, it will actuate this assembly right here. There is this detent lock that will hold it engaged until the lift all cylinders, farm all design and farm all trade name, come up against a hard stop. The relief valve is then in here. The fluid pressure will act upon the sleeve. The sleeve will push on this um, lock arm right here, which disengages the hydraulic circuit, returns it back to neutral. So there we go, good spring tension. Holds itself in place. You can also bump it down too if you want, but yep. Hydraulic relief, pow, auto disengage. All that's working like it should. And we can finish off by reinstalling the drive coupling. So we've got our same bar down into the suction port, locking the pump gears from turning. And here's something I will do. I'll put just a film of sealer on the back side of that coupling because that is going to seal those threads against that pump shaft. If you don't seal that up back there, you could get a little bit of oil seepage coming through the center of this coupling and running out, giving you a film, creating a mess. So with that out of the way, we just thread it in. Be careful as it goes into the seal. I've also greased the lip of the seal. That helps everything quite a lot. All right. Give it a cinch. And what I'm going to do is just do a test spin before I fully tighten it in. Test spin is good. So lock everything once again. Just give it a tap with the mallet. There. That's usually all it takes to keep that tight. Both directions. Good spin. So that means the main housing is back in play. I've cleaned this one as well. Gasket surface uh, completely rehabbed, flat, good threads, absolutely clean on the inside once again. And I just finished making the new gasket to go between the control cover and pump cartridge and housing. And that brings me to another comment that we found the other day. Chris Wagner says, um, Love the channel. Would you be willing to make a how to make custom gaskets video? What type of gasket material to use in different locations? How to seam two large gaskets together, etc. And you all let me know. Um, I've done all these things on video before in the past, although they have been under other projects 
and are not specifically titled as such. And a lot of new people have not watched the old content. So if you all want me to do a dedicated how I make gaskets video, let me know in the comments down below. Um, I did the how I clean tractor parts video a couple of months back rather begrudgingly, but it was re requested enough because I honestly thought it was not going to be viewed favorably because career mechanics like myself um, have clean parts to the point that we don't wanna even watch anybody else do it. But it turns out that's been the highest viewed video I've made all year so far. So maybe gaskets would go well too. I don't know, y'all let me know. So the first piece that goes back in, well, is the rubber seal on the side. The next first piece that goes back in is the shaft for that actuation arm. And I'll try my best to make it so you all can see a little bit of what's happening down in here. It's not going to be easy with the camera. I'm pretty much blocking everything with my arms and hands and the rest is all shadow. But we've lined, lined the key in. So we have our round washer style key. Throw that in place and then the pinch bolt goes in. And I'm, I'm blocking everything, I know. There we are, open up a little bit. So the pinch bolt is tight, internal arm is secure, gasket in place on the front of the tank, along with the sealer that I prefer for this situation. And now we throw the cover and control and pump cartridge in position. And um, this is really fun because we have to align the slot opening in this lever with the peg on the end of the arm and all of that is done by feel. You cannot really see what's happening once you get this most of the way in, you know, in position. So what I'll be doing is um, picking it up and we'll have to go in and then strategically at the last minute kind of dive that way to get over that peg. I'll then be working by feel out here with the lever to uh, determine when it has dropped into the opening. and. We'll have sealer and goo all over us by the time we're done. Sometimes it takes two or three tries. I've done it before, I'll do it again. Okay, it feels like we're in. Cover bolts all tight. I want to check operation of that valve. So I have the control arm cleaned up and the bolt. Engage that with the four slots and yep, got good spring tension there. That's what you want. I'm not gonna go and lock that all the way. Oh, I'll lock it all the way back. I, you can usually get it unlocked again. Okay, there's lock back. You can usually get it unlocked again without hydraulic pressure. Yep, you just have to dance it a little bit. Very good. So, pull this back off for now because I don't need it on there for the paint process. It'll just be in the way. Final piece. I'm going to throw this, uh, this first gen old school breather cap on. Now this is not right, correct, and proper for this serial number of tractor. But this is something my grandfather had with a bunch of his H stuff. And I'll show you. This is what he had been running on there for years and years, just a galvanized kind of an angle, not an L, but just an angle, like a 45, with a cap on there because it didn't let any water in and it was easier to uh, get a funnel on. Well, I wanna have something that's IH original and 
Um, these tractors originally also had like a bayonet gauge style dipstick that would go in under the cap. This is not the style, but um, I did have the plug out. I removed all the old media from the inside. It's it's like a bunch of torn up canvas and some, some thread basically is what it is. Cleaned it up, stuffed it all back in, made sure we had good open um, air passage hole so it's a good vent. It's a nice looking cap. Something from my grandpa's stash of stuff. This was his tractor at one time before it was mine, so I kind of like that on there. So the upcoming paint batch pile gets a little bit bigger with the addition of the hydraulic unit. Uh, you've already seen the external arm. Here's the control rod for that. It, ex it extends up to the operator's platform. I had to make sure that was shaped correctly, cleaned up, ready to go. And uh, the other day, I decided to rehab the air cleaner. So this is not the one off the H. My original one had a big dent right there. This is the one I picked up at the Lesseur swap meet in uh, early or uh, late April. I cleaned it up inside out. It was pretty good shape. I did have to uh, do a weld repair around the upper tube portion here from an ill-fitting hood that had rattled on that long enough that it started to uh, cut into it. So we filled that with weld, flushed it out. And I also had to uh, solder the um, breather line uh, bung back in there that had pushed in. And I actually found that down on the bottom of the cups. So uh, air cleaner top, the jar style is cleaned up. We've got a dent right off the end of my finger right there. I'll have to fill that, flush that a little bit, as well as dress uh, some of that right there. But that also came out pretty good. And I got into this, uh, this bearing support block. Now this is what... I mentioned in the last episode that goes on this bracket here and that steering shaft goes down through it and this was worn about an eighth inch out of round so I decided to bush it back to standard. I threw this in the milling machine over there with a drop down boring bar and just started removing material until we made it round again. We're getting close to rounding it back out. You can see the grease fitting hole, that round black hole down in there. And we've got the shadow up above it and the darker shadow below it. Everything else is nice and shiny all the way around. The dark shadows are the low spots still. So we're getting close to having it rounded back out. A couple more passes. So we have it looking pretty good right now. And just minutes ago from McMaster Car, the new bushing showed up. So. I can get busy getting that pressed into its new home, sized to the shaft. We have the rest of these parts can go down with the pile and, well, I think we're going to wrap the episode right here. Um, I think we're in a good jumping off point. Thank you for watching everyone. Um, banging that hydraulic pump out was something that had been on my list for a while but I hadn't really been enthused about it. Glad to have it done and I think a mosquito is bothering me again. Hope to see y'all back next time.